Hey, welcome to Electra Online, and now let's see if we learned all the previous videos, what we've seen in all the previous videos, with some general examples of what we've learned to date. Okay, here we have four examples. First, we're going to try to find the probability of pulling three spades from a deck of cards. Then the probability of selecting a six-child family that only has one boy and therefore five girls. Selecting a six-child family with one boy who is the youngest of the six and all others are girls. And finally, select the probability of selecting an eight-child eight family with five boys and three girls. All right, first of all, the first one here, we want to find the probability of pulling three spades. And those are three events. So this is equal to the probability of getting the first spade multiplied times the probability of getting the second spade multiplied times the probability of getting the third spade. Now notice in this example we're not putting the spades back in the deck, so we're not restoring the deck in each case, so the probability will change as the game goes along. So this would be equal to the probability of getting the first spade. Now how many spades are there in a the deck? There are 13 spades and the deck has 52 cards, so the probability is 13 over 52. Next, the probability of getting the second spade, now there's one less spade and one less card. So that means the probability is 12 out of 51. And finally, the third attempt, now there's again one less spade again, so now there's only 11 spades and 50 cards. So the probability for the third spade would be 11 out of 50. And so let's get a calculator. That would be 13 times 12 times 11 divided by 52, divided by 51, divided by 50, and I get a probability of 0 0.0129. So 0 0.0129, which means 1.29% chance, that's not very high, that when you pull three consecutive cards, all three of them will be spades. It could be all three from any of the four uh, types of cards. So that would be the probability for that. Next, we're trying to select a six-child family with one boy. So out of a group of six-child families, when would we pull somebody? What would be the probability of pulling somebody that only has one boy? How do we do that? So the probability would be equal to, that would be n over k divided by, um, divided by 2 to the n power. All right. So... Remember what n over k stands for. n over k can be then written as, this is equal to n factorial divided by k factorial times n minus k factorial, and divide the whole thing by 2 to the n power. Now, what does n and what does k represent in this case? Well, n is the number of children, so n equals the number of children, and k equals the number of of boys or girls. It actually doesn't matter. We can let k be the number of girls or k be the number of boys. This works because there's only two options here. Either it's a boy or a girl in each case and that's why we use that equation. All right, let's plug in the numbers. n is the number of children, so that would be 6 factorial divided by k, which would be 1 factorial divided by 6 minus 1, 6 minus 1 factorial all divided by 2 to the 6th power. All right, so this is equal to, that would be 6 factorial, that would be 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, divided by 1 factorial is 1, times 6 minus 1 is 5 factorial, that would be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all divided by, and I'll write it like this, 1 over 2 to the 6th power, that would be Let's see here, 2 to the 6th power is 64. All right, now we can simplify things. Notice we have a 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, and a 1 here. So this becomes 6 divided by 64. This is equal to 3 divided by 32. And that would be the probability, if you meet a number of families that have 6 children, that there will be one of those families that has one boy and five girls, the chances would be 3 out of 32, or the probability would be 3 out of 32 that that would be the case. All right, next we're going to put a, a little bit more of a restriction on it. Here again, we're looking for, we're gathering a bunch of six child families, and we're looking for the probability that out of those families, there'll be one that has 
five boys, um, five girls and one boy, but the boy must be the youngest of the six children. All right, so now we have a situation where when every child is born, it has to be a particular sex, either boy or girl. In this case, we can then say that the probability would be equal to the probability of the first child being a girl times the probability of the second child being a girl times the probability of the third child being a girl times the probability of the fourth child being a girl times the probability of the fifth child being a girl times the probability of the sixth child being a boy because in each case you have to have that particular uh, outcome of each of those births so that means the probability is equal to it'll be one half times one half times one half times one half times one half and times one half which means the probability is equal to one over two to the sixth power which is one in 64. that is the probability that you'll end up with a family with six children where the first five are all girls and the youngest one is a boy. One is 64 as opposed to three out of 32 if it can be any sort of arrangement of boys and girls as long as there are five girls, one boy, but the boy can be born at any time. Finally, we're going to try to find the probability of finding an eight-child family with five boys and three girls out of a group of eight-child families. All right, again, we use the same equation we use over there. The probability is equal to n over k divided by 2 to the n power. Now in this case, n is going to be 8, number of children is 8, and k, let's k be representative of the number of boys, so this becomes 8 over 5 divided by 2 to the 8 power. So remember what this means, that means this is 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 8 minus 5 factorial divided by 2 to the 8 power. And this will then become 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, all divided by 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, multiplied times 8 minus 5 is 3, so that becomes 3 factorial, 3 times 2 times 1, all divided by 2 to the 8 power, which is 256. Okay, now... I did write it all out like that, but after a while we start realizing when we have 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial, the numbers 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 will all cancel out like this. And so that means when we have 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial, we just get 8 times 7 times 6. All right, this then simplifies to the probability is equal to, we have 8 times 7 times 6 divided by uh, 3 times 2 times 1. And divided by 256, that is times 1 over 256, like this. We can simplify things a little bit more. This 6 can cancel out with 3 times 2. Okay, so now we have 56 divided by 256. Let's see here. 56 divided by 256. Divide both sides, top and bottom, I should say, by 2. We get 28 divided by 128, which is 14 divided by 64 which is equal to 7 divided by 32. And I guess that's the simplest we can make it without going to a decimal. And that's the probability when you have a family of eight children, out of a group of families with eight children, that five will be boys and three will be girls. The chances, the probability is seven out of 32. And that's how we do that.